Well, howdy diddly dandy there, Charms. Tis I, Captain of the Steves. And today, Charms, I'm going to be doing some speculation around some of the Worlds 2 type stuff that has been data mined and what I feel that might mean for these purple systems that we might be getting in Worlds 2. So if you don't know what I mean about the purple systems or the data mining, let's just do a quick recap. Let's jump on over to the Tinterwebs and I will show thee what I'm on about. I guess. Chicka pow pow! Chicka boom boom! So here we go, we're over on the actual tinterwebs right now. And these are the purple systems that have been data mined by that bomber boy over on Twitter. If you aren't following that bomber boy, please do. Awesome source for information, not only that, but also puts out some pretty cool stuff. Anyways, things that make you smile on the daily. Anyways, a new hyper drive material and engine has been found inside of the data files and it jumps you to purple star systems. Just like this one is like a blue star system, the Idian system. There is one that's going to jump you to a purple star system out there in space. Now, to make it, you need inverted mirrors, Atlantium and Idium. Now, to make the idiom drive, you need the emerald to make an idiom drive. And for, for that, to make the emerald drive, you need cadmium. You know, so it's like progression. So idmium, it kind of makes sense. Atlantium is a new substance that we get from sort of dissonant planets. Now, they are sort of all appeared around the time of the Void Mother appearing inside of Law and the ARG. So I'm wondering whether Worlds Part 2 might have some sort of lore and story that might tie in maybe the Void Mother into all of this. But Atlantium is a very interesting ingredient because the Atlantid and also Atlantis inside of, you know, world mythology is like an underwater type city or a city that went under the water, you know, Atlantis. Inverted mirrors, you get those from these weird drilling sentinel robot type looking things on dissonant planets. So dissonant and these purple sort of planets that we already have, I think are going to play a big role inside of the purple systems. But not only that, I also think because we've got Atlantium, that that is a hint that these planets might be deeper oceaned planets. You know, let me uh, jump on over to the opposite side of the screen and make this a little bit bigger for you before I jump onto the next tab. Chikapow! So here we go, there's a little bit more text in this one. And this one is, yeah, a little bit more around the purple systems. Even more evidence for purple systems. It looks like there's specific spawning list of creatures for purple systems. They also look to be counted and handled similarly to the Atlas and black hole systems by the Galaxy Voxel Generator. Interesting. I wonder if there's going to be different entry points, not just a new purple entry. I wonder whether we might get to go through this by visiting the Atlas or maybe go, ah, no, hold on. I think what he means by this is the Atlas and black holes. You can sort of get to them on the galactic map, can't you? Hmm. Yeah, I think there's ways of reading into that and different interpretations of how you can interpret that. But anyways, purple system specific sort of spawn rates. I'll make these a bit bigger on the screen for anybody that can read code. But there we go. Lovely jubbly. And we've got that too. Gone. Doesn't mean very much to me, have to admit. But it's purple system specific. Abandoned system specific. Ah, okay, I get you. Coolio. All right, now let's go to the next one. Lovely jubbly. So this is to do with the biomes that have also been found inside of the game files. Now there's like an arid desert or maybe like a beach-like looking biome in a roundabout way, like dunes. And then there's three underwater biomes, one of them looking rather creepy and rather sinister, but three new underwater biomes. So I think that's a big hint that we might be getting giant oceanic wells with deeper, perhaps more threatening, more creepy like biomes, an underwater sort of system perhaps you know with perhaps dune like planets so maybe the only land masses are beachy type juney type land masses and then we've got giant swathes of ocean deeper oceans maybe bigger predatory creatures inside of those oceans something else that was found is ruins like a biome for ruins now not all of these have been textured 
But imagine that. Imagine if they combine that alongside the deserty type biome. So the only land masses you find are going to be covered in relics from old civilizations. Or who's to say that they won't put these under the water? Could be quite an interesting realm or interesting sort of system. Now I'm thinking that the purple systems themselves might be related to the Void Mother. I mean, she's very purple in colorization. And the fact that you have to make the actual warp engine out of Atlantium kind of hints at that just that little bit more. Anyway, moving over to the next one. There are a few references to deep water region on planets, starting at the lower water depths. Some of the unused water biomes have asset names which suggest they might be deep water biomes. Deep water regions seem to also drain your oxygen faster. So these deeper, darker oceans in a roundabout way, the further you get, maybe the more hazards happen your oxygen drains faster. I mean, we see that happen to our life support on planets. Our oxygen starts to, oh, our life support goes down faster when a storm kicks in. It looks like similar sort of mechanics might happen on these deeper water regioned planets. I mean, I'm not saying every planet is going to be deep water ocean planets inside of the realm of glass or this purple system, but I think a few will be, or the swave or majority will be. Okay, next tab. Cool. After a bit more tweaking, the flying lizard and glow creatures finally spawn. They're clearly a lot less finished than the manta ray, which we'll get to in a moment, unless they're meant to look all see-through and like vein bags. Well, I think they look like jellyfish. Now, I'm, I'm wondering whether they're not going to actually fly in the sky, but swim in the oceans. Or if they do fly in the sky, maybe along the shorelines or something like that. But these almost look like jellyfish-like creatures. So perhaps we might see more fauna appearing inside of these systems in this jelly-like fish-type vibe. And they do look pretty darn fantastic, especially with all the new sort of graphical stuff that Hello Games is capable of now with their engine, with reflections and all that sort of shenanigans. I'd imagine these are going to look quite majestic and quite alien. I really like this idea. Pretty darn nice. So they might even you know, fly through the oceans or maybe just above them. Who knows? OK, next off, the manta rays. So these are giant underwater creatures. Now, I don't know whether the actual write up on these is correct to what um, might be procedurally generated with this or whether it's just picked up another creature that has been overskinned. But they do look pretty darn cool. And you can see there's various variants, like this one's sort of like wings, if you want to call them that, uh, one shape, where the next one is very much a different shape. And even the tail has got different spikes and things. So I don't know. I think these could be pretty darn nice. I doubt there's going to be many um, variants when it comes to procedural alignment, but you know, I don't know. I mean, every single texture on these is different again. But um, at the same time, I'm not too sure whether he's managed to pull in the right textures for these or not. But it is looking pretty darn nice. But larger underwater fauna, I think we can quite clearly say this, this confirms that, perhaps. I mean, this is saying a 1.1 metre. And this one's saying 0 0.8 metres. I don't know whether he's actually just overskinned existing creatures with these or whether that is the actual sizes of them. But to me, that doesn't feel like that's too large. Okay, right, moving on. So that Bomber Boy has managed to put all of these biomes into a mod and put them on Nexus mods. So if you have got a PC and you do know how to run mods, you can jump on over and install this mod pack and actually get them working. This is that Relic World, and you can see there are a lot of them. It isn't textured as yet, but it is looking rather groovy. And there's a couple of screenshots for this one as well. Like we've got one there with a desolate type planet. An underwater biome that looks pretty darn freaking cool. Again, that. Uh, another one of the underwater biomes. Oh, I like that one. That looks pretty darn... That looks like subnautica in places, doesn't it? You know? But yeah, look at that. That dust sort of emitter there. I think we could have quite a fun time on these new biomes, these new worlds, depending on what we do there. You know... We're seeing a lot more to see, but we're not being given a lot more to do. I mean, killing these bugs and things has been fun. 
But at the same time, after we've managed to get this mech, why would we be killing them in future, you know? Anyways. So we get... So something I did want to also touch on is this new reference to nav mate meshes for freighters and nexus as well as planets. I read this as NPC parthing. But I'm wondering whether it actually means that freighters are now going to move. The Nexus and Spatial Anomaly is actually going to move. And planets are actually going to, to move. I don't think this is NPC parthing, but actual movement of those objects. So freighters, planets, as well as the Anomaly when they're in space. I could be wrong. I mean, I can't read code. I am not 100% sure. But that's that's another interpretation. I thought I'd just leave that in there as a, a, another little nugget. But anyway, I think there's evidence. I think there's evidence inside of game for perhaps even this new water type planet coming into game. So I'm going to jump on over and show you what I mean, people. I won't be a second. Okay, chums, you, you, we, we convene of me flying down towards a planet coming down above an ocean now before you'd have to look for an island to land on and you know sometimes there's no islands around i mean just ignore that one. <laughs> oh my days look at the lightning coming in but anyways before you'd have to find a landmass to land and jump into the oceans now if you've got the tech installed you can just hit land and we can land anywhere we like on oceans let's jump on out of the ship peeps Sweet. So I'm now on board my actual ship's roof. And you can see here, I'm just above the oceans. If I go into camera mode. Zoom. My ship is now landed on the ocean. No need for land to land your ship anymore, people. You can just land on the actual ocean itself. So I would say, why would Hello Games implement this sort of technology? Yes, to make it easier for you to explore oceans. But not only that, what if there is no land on some planets? What if they are fully oceanized planets? I think we might be doing a lot more under the oceans. Now, something else to note is your actual exomech. If I can find my exomech. Ah, it's not letting me summon it underwater for some reason. But normally you can. Normally you can put your... Um, your exomech under the ocean and you can pilot your exomech under here what the fudge is going oh okay we've got swimming cow creatures okay so i'm thinking maybe if there are swimming cow creatures inside of these ocean worlds they might look more jellyfish-esque anyway you know like the jellyfish type birds that we saw earlier oh there's that big predatory creature he's pretty cool isn't he i'm hoping we see far more far more underwater giant creatures like this they are awesome and I'm hoping that they're more aggressive. Sweet. So that new technology was introduced is here. The Aqua Jets. An advanced upgrade for the Starship's landing system, enabling the ship to land and take off on aquatic surfaces. A mixture of bespoke jets and redirected exhaust fans allow the ship to hover just above the water's surface. So I think that that's been added for a reason. And I think the reason is that we might be, you know, getting these lovely ocean planets. I mean, I look at the oceans now of all these waves and things. They look freaking gnarly. They really do. Anyways, I just want to tr show you something with the exomech that I was trying to show you in the ocean. I mean, these things are very waterproof. I'm wondering whether the new exomech that we get from this expedition, maybe we can just summon it underwater. But normally you can pilot your exomech underwater. There he is. Right, and let's go to the ocean. Hiya! Splosh. And they actually behave in the oceans just as they do on land. I actually prefer to use my exomech underwater than to use the Nautilus. And you can see there, the only thing I've got to worry about is the actual energy bars. I haven't got to worry about hazard protection or anything like that. 
actually really good for gathering resources and for doing combat under these oceans. I mean, sadly, and you can't use your visor, but how cool is that? Zappity zap. Oh, now we get some freaking underwater jellyfish. Didn't get those before. Take that, jellyfish of evil. Ah, yeah. Got him. Pretty darn cool, huh? So there we go. That's pretty much my theories on why I think we might be getting more ocean planets. You know, once you've done underwater, you can just then call your ship. Oh, OK. I haven't got any launch thruster fuel inside of my ship. But you can just move it really simply from A to B underwater now. OK, chums. Now, something else that makes me think that we might see more happening inside of these other realms is down to the living ships. I mean, when you look at the living ships themselves, they almost look clamshell-like. They do look like they belong underwater more so than anything else, or at least they do to me. And they do look more like the sort of things that we see on infested worlds. And this whole purple hue that this one's got about it makes me really do think that this thing has arrived from the void. Now, when you think these things actually came from void eggs and the void mother herself, the Atlantid, it kind of starts to tie all this sort of stuff together. And then when you look at the actual living frigates, they've got barnacles on the dang things that almost make them look like they came from under the water as well. So let's go and have a better look at the actual frigate, shall we? And I'll show you what I mean. I think probably the best way to do this would be from my fleet command. So here we go. I mean, I can't really zoom into these, but you can see all these barnacles all over them and what look like sort of I don't know, seaweed coming off of them, too. They almost look like they've come straight out of the abyss. And it's not just one that has got this on it. They all have. And, and they do look like they're swimming through space. But who's to say that we're not going to see these more commonplace inside of these purple systems? It, it just has that vibe to it that we're going to get this living, more organic, sort of water weldy type areas of space. And I think these are sort of hallmarks of that. And I'm wondering whether the echoes that we've put into these robotic life forms came from a race that looked more like these majestic sort of creatures. And we've just housed them inside of new shells, hence their echoes of their former selves. They didn't look anything like they look now. So the whole autophage stuff might have thrown us off the scent a little. And perhaps we're going to look more like the um, the chitin race that I've got on my PC save now that I've adorned myself of all that stuff. I'll jump back over in a second and show you what I mean. So perhaps we're going to look more like this. Or this, you know, the whole chitin race. But there's also another head here, like the a fleshy, strange head. One second, I'll see if I can find it for you. Which I think could be another sort of variant of a new race. It's actually under Traveller rather than Anomaly. But this sort of head here looks like it could be from, you know, the Atlantid realm. But yeah, pretty darn cool. OK, well, there you are, chums. I think I've presented some evidence there that I feel that the Atlantid is going to become this new purple realm in a roundabout way. These new purple realms, I think, are going to be linked to Atlantid and the Void Mother. What race resides there, I'm still on the fence about. I mean, I think these living ships, they need to have more modules. I mean, at the moment, we've got the equivalent of photon cannons. We've got the equivalent of um, the, the phase beams. But we haven't got equivalents of, say, the Silotron or the Positron Ejector or the um, the one that fires really rapidly that will lose me right now. But yeah, we haven't got the equivalent really of weapons for the actual living ships. They're still under par compared to the other ship types. And we still don't know exactly where the void resides. It is said to reside between the different systems that we see now. Ariadne went missing into the void in between the world between stars as it was suggested and went aboard a big dark freighter 
What we have standing in her place is some sort of doppelganger, an imposter, a spy amongst us. So I feel that Hello Games can use these new purple systems if they are just another purple system that now appears amongst our star map. That kind of fits into the Ariadne storyline, story line, and I think that might get breathed back into game. We might get to revisit and maybe rescue Ariadne in some sort of side arc. So I think all this, even if it doesn't come in Worlds Part 2, might be on the horizon in future, perhaps. But I think Worlds Part 2 is going to at least lay down the foundations for some of this story to sit upon. I think we're going to be going to the purple star systems, maybe uncovering more about the Void Mother first and foremost, because that's more aligned to current lore and the current ARG that we have ongoing. But I think these new purple systems are going to bring in oceanic planets, deeper ocean biomes, free new biomes for underwater, bring in all this sort of relic sort of stuff, nods to the past as well as these, you know, the, 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 the actual autophages that we have now, but maybe even touch on some sort of more organic race like the living frigates or leviathans as they're called and also the living ships and bring us in that technology that we've been missing for so long for our living ships. I think it's going to be a ex very exciting time and I think we're going to be needing this new exomech with the flamethrower attachment to do combat there and I'm wondering whether the exomech is also going to be able to traverse the bottom of the oceans like it does now but maybe we can summon it in the oceans even though it's given a red state right now rather than having to find an island for it. Or maybe we can just cool it down like a titan drop, like an airdrop straight into the ocean waters from our freighter with some new technology. And maybe it's not just going to be a warp drive that takes us into the realm, although that will be one method, but maybe they might implement other methods. Maybe it might be the station override, maybe we might jump through black holes, maybe we might have to speak to Nada and Polo to pinpoint them on the galactic map like they do right now with Atlas stations and black holes like was alluded to inside of that code. All this sort of stuff I hope and more will be answered in Worlds Part 2 people. And if we do come across anything else inside of the files I'll be sure to let you know well that is if it gets shared out there by the community and that bomber boy if you haven't already followed him go hit him up. So anyway I find this all extremely interesting let us know what you think down in the comments it's always great reading those until next time goodbye goodbye and goodbye again.